hi guys welcome back to my youtube channel so today i'm going to be continuing the three part series this is the last part of course so i'm going to dive in at once to the 20 features of a potential leader part three so this is my 14 num my number 14 which is relationship with the opposite sex now this is very very important i want us to read uh first timothy chapter 5 on verse 1 and 2 and i'm going to read from here it says do not rebuke an elder man harshly but exalt him as if he was your own father treat younger men as brothers older women as mothers and younger women as sisters with all purity i want to really emphasize on all purity once once you are in the household of god all people are considered as a brother and a sister now that means that you should love them with all the purity of heart with with humbleness and also with that which you, as you love yourself you should love them it's very very important for us to know that as a put as 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 a man which you are planning to be an a shepherd or a potential shepherd a potential pastor please i want you to treat every man or every woman any brother or sister at the same age uh, level with you like as if it's your own brother or sisters this is very important why because many of us men um, i mean the lord calls so many of many people right now very young i see a lot of young people which the, the lord is using powerfully but they are being derailed and they are being uh, 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 stuck at a particular level they can climb up because of sexual immorality in church I do encourage marriage early. Getting married early will, will, will automatically quench that sexual, sexual drive, that sexual appetite. Okay? If you see that you cannot be a eunuch, please do marry. And please, if, you are, if the Lord is calling you to be a eunuch, you have to tell your pastor at once. So that we should know that this is what god has called you to become okay i celebrate all those who are, are, are called eunuchs out there because it's really few me myself i'm married so i am I'm, I'm a married woman and i'm also a minister of god and the lord called me so young and i'm still young i'm still not old so please what i would tell you is you have to marry you have to put it in mind to marry it's very very important because I will tell you, once as you step up to start speaking the word of God and preaching to people, the anointing that is upon you will radiate so much that people will automatically start falling in love with you and they will make advances at you. You'll be there and you know you have to resist the temptation, you have to resist the urges. And I will tell you, the flesh will want to, want to have that as well. The flesh will want you to satisfy him, you know, but you have to resist the flesh resisting by getting married okay so that is my number 14 and my number 15 is loyalty loyalty hallelujah loyalty is a key essential feature of a potential shepherd i want you to be a loyal man or a woman if the lord is calling you into the work of ministry I want us to read in the book of first timothy 3 from verse 8 i'm going to show you something there so first timothy 3 from verse 8 it says in the same way deacons are to be worthy of respect sincere not indulging in much wine and not purging this honest gain loyalty is an essential feature of a potential leader if you are if you are to be a leader you have to lead you have to lead others and i will tell you if you are loyal to your pastor you are loyal to your mentor or your father or your the apostle of the house which you are to him i will tell you all those that you are raised in the future will be loyal to you as well it's something that works like that okay loyalty is very important when you are a loyal person you will learn more you will gain more. You, in fact, loyalty places you in a place of respect and in a place of advancement. Loyalty is a very key thing. Nobody wants to do any. Nobody wants to do with do with do do something. Do have have something to do with someone that is disloyal, someone that is disrespectful, someone that is dishonest. 
okay loyalty you must be loyal to the father or the mother in the house your apostle in the church you must be loyal to his teachings you must be loyal to his direction you must be loyal to every word he was he will give every instruction he will say that let the church do this when he will call you you have to be there when he says church start at 5 30 or 6 30 whatever time you have to come at that time he should not come and meet you know so these are small small things that we see a disloyal person you know, when I talk about loyalty, many people are like, you know, outright disrespect. Like they don't do when they say, when they talk about so doing something, they don't do it. No, this small thing about uh, of don't come into church early, you know, those small little things that is disloyalty. Disloyalty is manifested in that level. So if you are a potential uh, shepherd or a pastor, please, loyalty should be one of the main things you should practice you should make it as a habit to cultivate that to develop that to be loyal to everyone to your pastor to your mentor to be loyal loyalty is the key is one of the main key for growth okay things cannot be handed to you if you are if you are not a loyal person N nobody can entrust you if you are not loyal with anything Okay, so loyalty is one of the main things. So I want us to also to go and check. Uh, okay, we already checked the book of First Timothy 3 from verse 8. So I'm going to leave this point. I will not stress onto it too much. So I'm going to go into the number 16, which is having personal, personal and job stability. If you are a potential leader or you have this, this future, Please, I want you to put your stability, your personal, you must have a personal stability, personal relationship, and also your jobs, job relationship, it should be stable, okay? Today, we should not see you are friends with uh, 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 X, and the next we are seeing your best friend is Y. I mean, you keep changing people, we see you with this person, we see you with this person, you are not stable in your ways, even in your friendship, the people you bring close to you. Today we are seeing you with this, tomorrow you, you, are, you are with this, or you, you keep on changing, you keep on changing jobs. You know, the things of, of the Lord should be handed with someone that has, a, that has stability in his emotions, even in his jobs, okay? So if you keep changing, 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 Things cannot be handed handed over to you. Responsibility cannot be handed over to you. Because I'll tell you, the work of God is responsibility. All right? The Lord is calling you into this field of work. is giving you res responsibility. Handing you over to take care of the people. All right? So you have to be stable in your emotions. You have to be stable in your emotions. Stable in your job. Stable in your career. Okay, in any other thing that you're doing, before we can see that you can be stable even with the things of God. Because if you are not stable with the other things, how can you be stable with the work of God? All right, so please make it, make it as a very, very important development to develop your stability in life. Personal stability, career-wise, and every other thing. All right, so I'm going to be speaking to number, uh, talking to you about number 17, which is the vision of the shepherd so without vision my people perish which we know okay proverbs 29 proverbs 29 from verse 18 we see that very clearly all right so we say there is no revelation people cast off restraints but blessed is the one who heeds wisdom wisdom's instruction all right so you without vision you perish you must be a man or a woman of vision okay without vision the people perish where are you leading the people to without having a vision where are you going ask yourself where are you going to all right so when those people will come to you when those people are coming to you know to listen to you they, they are expecting you to take them somewhere where is the journey all right if they don't see a vision how can they they, they cannot follow you you have to develop that and vision i will tell you is one of the main key for people to listen to you to follow you 
to, to always watch um, or be with you, okay? Vision is essential. You have to have a vision as a leader, as a potential shepherd. Have a vision, okay? So my number 19, my number 18 is be ready for persecution. Uh, now some people just, <laughs> you know, they just want to, like everything will be rosy all the time and everything will be sweet you know the lord's work is just like that i will tell you it's one of the main work that you'll be persecuted you'll be persecuted at all levels at every side you'll be persecuted at every time you'll be persecuted jesus was persecuted you know i want you to read from the, uh, from matthew 5 from 11 to 12. i will read from from there so you can get something he says blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven. For in same way, they, they persecuted the prophets who were before you. All right? The people that were before you, the great prophets, the apostles, they were persecuted because of the gospel, because of the word they preached to the people, because of the message of salvation. So I will tell you that as long as you are in this place of becoming a shepherd or a shepherd or shepherding a flock or something, please put it in mind that you'll be persecuted. Put it in mind that people will throw stones at you. Because they did it like that in the prophets at the old time, at the olden days, with the apostles as well, with Jesus even. They persecuted, they persecuted, they persecuted. No, the church of God is always persecuted. Know that you will be persecuted. You will not be void of persecution. But the Bible says rejoice and be glad if they persecute you because of the kingdom's sake. Okay? Rejoice and be glad for your reward is sure. Hallelujah. So I'm going to go to my point number 19. He says, don't and do work with the multitudes. The first one I say is don't work with the multitudes. Now, I want you to read something. I want you to read somewhere. I'll, I'll, I'll explain. In Matthew chapter 14, 23, he says, after he had dis dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray later that night he was there alone hallelujah this is something jesus when you go to before this verse maybe at uh, 2021 jesus had fed the multitudes with a uh, fish and lo and, and, and loaf and after he left from there the bible says he departed from them to be alone. It's very essential that it, what you should develop that future of being alone. Always removing yourself from the multitudes. Going aside to pray. Going aside to talk with God. Most of the times you have so many church members coming to you to ask for counsel. To ask for so many things. For prayers. For other things. For teachings. For all of that. I will tell you, it's not all the time you have to contain them. There are some times you have to, you let them go and you go out to pray. You have to respect the t your, your commitment to your prayer place. You have to respect the commitment of your prayer, prayer room, prayer time, and your prayer altar. You have to respect the commitment of that. Because if it's time for you to do that and you don't do that, I will tell you, the, the multitudes, when they see the anointing upon you, you preach powerfully and all of that, they will come because they see that. And when that, that will deem you don't respect your prayer place and go back to connect to the source and have a prayer time uh, aside, okay, they will, they will, they will, they will soak up the anointing in you. And when they don't see that anymore, they will leave. See, for you to regenerate the anointing, you need to set a time for you to be alone. It's very, very essential. Alone, set a time where you respect to be alone. Where you regenerate yourself. When you refill yourself with the anointing. Where you, you, you communicate to, with God personally. It's very important that you learn this principle as a potential future uh, leader or a shepherd. 
you have to set a time where you are alone with God. You have to set a time where you withdraw yourself from the multitude. You have to set a time and respect that time. When even if there are so many people at the queue, if it's your time for you to be alone with God, you have to stop whatever you're doing with the multitude and leave. Because I will tell you, there will be so many people that are sick that, are, that will come. So many greater challenges that what you were actually trying to do and you disrespected that time to obey with God, to be alone with him, you will never come back to it. But there will be more people needing help. So it's better for you to leave them and obey the time, the time which you have with God. I will tell you, it's very, very important. Don't miss that. Don't you ever miss that in the in your walk with God, your journey into, into, into the ministry, okay? Don't you ever miss that. It's okay for you to leave them and you go and obey your time, your personal time with God and refill, okay? So I would, I would also explain the reason why I said don't walk with, that is the don't walk with the multitude. And I'll also explain walking with the multitude in Matthew chapter 5 from verse 1. I will read this one. It says, now when Jesus saw the crowd, he went up on a mountainside and sat down his disciple his disciples came to him and he began to teach them every time you see the multitudes it's an opportunity for you to teach them it's an opportunity for you to teach them don't be afraid when you see gathering when you see a lot of gathering and you see a lot of people that you know they have not received Christ. You have to be boiled in your spirit to preach the word of God to them. Because uh, it, uh, 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 the multitudes appear more than 77 times in the whole of the scriptures. You, uh, you always see the multitudes, the multitudes. Because it's an essential aspect when it comes to shepherding or you being a pastor or being a shepherd. Because you, you see, you watch in the life of Jesus, the way he, do, he deals with the multitude. Because I will tell you, in, the, in, in this walk or, or the, 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 the ministry you're going to be, meet, uh, be a pastor under or serving in, you have a lot of people. Because this is a, a, a walk of talking with people. This is, this is something to do with many people. You are in a career or you are going... You are walking in a, in, a, in a place where you have to deal with so many people. So at every, every opportunity to, you have, you have to teach the people. Every opportunity, you have to teach them. All right? Teaching is essential. The Bible says, he go, the, 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 the Lord went on to the mountainside and he began to teach them. Teaching is essential. It's very, very vital for every shepherd out there. You teach them the word of God. And I will tell you, you teach the word only, not common sense. Okay? Not what you heard. Teach the scripture. If you don't know how to teach the scripture, read the scripture to them and explain exactly what is there. Because you have not to remove or add anything out of the word of God. Okay? Thank you so much. So let's go on to the last point. The last but not the least is developing the developing humility. Hum, humility is one of the main key points you have to have. I will tell you, no matter everything, humility is key. Humility is key. It's the greatest, is the one of the greatest features of a leader or of a potential shepherd. You have to be humble. Humility is key. I want us to go to James, James chapter 4, verse 6. He says, but he give us more grace. That is why scripture says, God opposes the proud, but shows favor to the humble. If you are a shepherd, please be a humble person because you're being graced. You have the favor of God. Meanwhile, if you are proud, you'll be resisted by the Lord. Okay? So you have to develop a humble heart, a humble spirit. You must be humble. All right, so I want us to read this last scripture, Psalms chapter 25 from verse, from verse 9. The Bible says, He guards the humble in what is right and teaches them his ways. He guards the humble in what is right 
and teaches them his ways. A humble man will know the ways of the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. God bless you. I want you to share this video, subscribe, and also tell someone to come and learn from this, from my, my, from, from, from part one, part two, part, part three of this video and develop the skills which I've shared. God bless you and remain blessed in Jesus name.